Welcome to Learn New Technology. Today we are going to learn install, configure Appium in our system, connect real Android device, launch and login app. Let's see one by one. So in our system, we should have Java installed. Then we need to install Android SDK tools, then Node.js, PDNet, Appium server, ADG plugin, Java client drivers, Appium client libraries. Let's see one by one. Let's launch the Google search engine. Let's type download Android SDK R24.4.1. The first one you need to select. Let's click on. So it started downloading. So it started downloading now. Let's wait for the download. So it may take very less seconds only. So 190 MP it says that. So based upon your internet speed, it will take time. So once it's downloaded, we can install it. It's going partially completed download. So less than seconds it will take to complete download then one minutes completed then it's completed let's open the folder let's refresh it copy the zip folder then go to your preferred folder so you can place it there then unzip it then you'll get the folder with exe files so it started extracting now so it's not responding anyway we could do it fast it started Sixty seven percent is complete, eight seventy percent is completed. Let's go, go to the folder, get into the folder. Then you need to select SDK manager. Let's double click on it. It started installing. It started installing SDK packages. So you need to click on accept license. So you need to select, then you need to accept license, then you need to install. So the required SDK bundles, you can download and install. So it started. So let's uh, take for the, let's wait for the completion. So it, will, it may take uh, longer time as it has to download minimum around one GB. So let's wait for the download completion. So the required packages you can download it. So based upon your internet speed, it may take time. So 50% is completed. Seven. It's going to complete. So twenty five seconds. So here you can see. So what are the tools I have inst selected and uh, installed? So these are the tools are not yet installed, but anyway, it will, we will complete installation. So it started installing. So it will finish.
so now we are going to set the path so let's go to advanced system settings then environment variables then so please confirm android home users and then now go to path in system variables so here you need to add the sdk path for that you need to go to users then your name then app data folder so here uh, go to local folder inside android then sdk folder so let's get into sdk folder then let's get the path for the platforms platform tools then tools so these three path we need to paste it there so let's click on new then let's add it so after that platforms we have added then next what we need to get platform tools and tools required let's go to sdk folder then get into platform tools folder let's copy the path then paste it under new then okay we have added now we require platform tools folder path oh we have added now tools folder path we require let's get into tools folder let's copy this one then click on new add it so we have successfully added path for the sdk click on ok then that's all we did but now uh, before that we need to check the check check it out whether it's properly installed or, or not so that for that go to command prompt then we can check it out in command prompt no issues so go to sdk tools folder in inside bin folder then select those path then type cmd uh, so you will get the command prompt where you need to type uh, so we need to confirm the sdk manager whether it's successfully installed or not for that we, are, we need to type sdk manager space hyphen hyphen version so it will give the version if it's properly installed let's wait for the response it's su successfully installed 26.11 now what are the apis we have installed let's check it out for that android list target so it's giving the APIs details so AP level 30 we have installed this is what we can do that now we are going to see how we can run node.js in our system so let's launch the google page and google search engine then enter download node.js for windows so here you need to select windows installer so it started downloading so once it's downloaded we can install it let's do it now so let's wait for the installation uh, download then we will start the installation so it's uh, in uh, downloaded so next then i ac accept it the next click on next next then install so it's installed So it's going to complete the installation for the Node.js. So it may take very less minutes. Then finally, we will check in command prompt also how it's uh, installed, whether it's whether we are able to get the version of the node.js so let's go to the command prompt 
where we will find whether in uh, node.js is properly installed or not so i open the command prompt type node hyphen node space hyphen v so our version will be 14.16. So now we are going to install PDA net. So this will help us to integrate with our real device with the script. So we need to select download Windows client app 5.23.1. Then you need to click on accept the license. Then you need to click on next. So before that we need to connect our real device with our system so that it will be configured properly then click on finish so it says that uh, connecting to your phone mm. so let's launch the google.com then we need to type appium.io so it will show this page here you need to select download appium so here you need to select Appium Windows 1.20.2 so it started downloaded so it shows that 246 MP so once it's downloaded let's install it so it will take a few seconds let's wait for that so it depends upon the internet speed so 48 50 MP so it will be completed soon 65 74 75 So it may take only within five minutes. So it's reached 100 MP. Then, so it's going to complete it now. So 200 MB, it's ready. It's going to ready now. 218. Then 246, going to complete now. It's done. 242. 246. Okay. Anyway, we can now open the software that we have downloaded, Appium Windows. Let's double click on it. Then let's select the option, anyone who is us. So it started installing. So this is Appium server. So whenever we run the script, so this server should be started prefix so that it will support integrate with our real device and appium server so let's wait for the server installation completed so it will take uh, few seconds so few configuration that it has to be done as it's uh, working as a server so it started fasting so this is the latest one So it will finish. So 
so in less than two minutes it will be completed let's wait for that it's going to complete now yes it's completed now let's uh, click on finish so we have completed installation appium server so let's make it work now so here uh, the server is launched so here, here we need to click on start server so the port number it's reflected there 4723 then host 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. so the server is running then we need to click on this start inspector session so that we can locate our device real device you can check it out the server is started and the inspector also started launching so here we need to enter the desired capabilities so that so we need to pass the key values let's enter the key as platform name the value as android the real device that we are going to use in our test then let's click on start it will integrate with our real device and show the app show the device with apps we could see that it's going to launch our uh, device yes this is my device so this is my home page of my real device so that we are going to use in our test so here you need to click on refresh so that the current status of the device screen that we could see this is what we can integrate our server with our device now we are going to install edit plugin for eclipse so we need to use this url in our eclipse let's go to eclipse uh, install new software so here you can enter the url that we have copied so that edit plugin will be installed let's check it check in then let's click on next button so it will start installing edit plugin so it requires to run our script so let's wait for that it will take a few seconds so this is a url so it started installing so it will be completed within three to four minutes let's wait for that So it started so we need to click on next button then we need to accept it then we need to click on finish so install anyway we need to click on then let's restart now so the eclipse will be restarted i d e so here so it will launch the eclipse then automatically the plugin installed successfully before that let's go to android then we need to check the path of the android sdk then apply and close then android sdk manager here uh you can check it out what are the mandatory things that we should have then only our script will run 
so let's see this is the tools installed in my system so mainly I have used Android 6 so other than that those packages I did not install so if you answer so now we are going to see how we can connect our real device with our device with our system further you just to type adb devices so the list of device attached is reflecting with UDID number now we are going to install visor so let's type google then type download visor then the first one you need to select visor downloads so click on let's wait for the software so it's taking time okay so you need to click on windows then you need to click on download so automatically it will be downloaded so it will help us to connect our real device with our system so it started downloading so it's very less only 87 MP So before that you need uh, before uh, we need to install SDK tools then only it will be connecting to our real device so it started launching the application so you need to select on this play button so that our device will be connected then we could see the device screen in our system so this is my real device so here we can tap on so it started so these are the apps I have in my mobile phone so we can go back to home screen so now we are going to create the Maven project in Eclipse. Let's click on File, then New, then Other. Then you need to select Maven project, then click on Next. Then let's click on Create, then Next button. Then let's give the group ID as test. So as per your requirement, you can give whatever you like. Then click on Finish. then next so the maven project is created so we need to add few dependencies so let's add one by one let's go to home.xml file so before that let's create a package then one class file package let's give the name as test then click on finish then let's create the Java project new then class so we'll create the Java class let's give the name as test so the Maven project is created with the package with the Java class so now we need to write the test script before that let's uh, uh, add the maven dependencies let's go to the pom.xml file where we need to add dependencies so here the main thing so test ng um, so here you need to select a version 4.1 1.1 .1, JUnit the first two dependencies 
that we need to copy and paste it in our perm.xml file. So before that, add dependencies tag with the start and the end tag. So in between, we, we can add multiple dependencies. Let's add one by one now. So we have added J unit dependencies now. Then let's add Java client. So we have added. Then next uh, Maven repository is uh, Selenium Java 2.53. Let's copy and paste it there. Then one more dependency that will be test ng. Let's copy paste this one. Then paste it. Let's save it. Then it will it will automatically download the dependencies. So these are the required dependencies for our script. So it started downloading and updating. Let's wait for the completion. So it will take very less seconds only. It's going to complete now. So it depends upon the internet speed. So now we could see, now we can update one more time so that we will not miss anything. Let's check the force update on snaps. Then it's, it's updating. It started, completed. So we have created a new package name as test. Now we are going to create one class. So we will give the class name as test. Then let's uh, click on main statement. Now, so the class is created now. So let's add the static statement. So in static statement, we are going to initialize web driver so that we can utilize it to the following lines. So let's get the import web driver. Let's select it so that it, it will be automatically installed. Then decide capability class. So for this for this class we are going to create one class one object that is capabilities equal to new desired capabilities open close parenthesis then colon let's import it Then after that, so that object dot capabilities dot set capability capability. So we need to select, then we need to pass the key with the values. So the first one will be platform name. So that will be Android as we are going to use Android real device. So let's include with uh, double quote for both key and value so that it will be corrected. So it's still showing error. Oh, let's correct it now. Then second line will be same as above capabilities dot set capability. 
so let's give the key value as platform name platform version so here so my device version that I have is 9.0 that is why I have given 9.0 so in your case you can give your device version name so you can get it from your device go to settings then about phone so where you will get the settings and that that the platform version of the phone so here uh, i am going to command prompt so when i type adb devices so it will tell us so what are the devices connected with our system so currently i have connected my uh, device with my system so it has given udid value so let's copy above line then include it with key as udid then within double quote so let's copy this same above line then app package so we need to get the app package name so here so we need to include the app package name so for that uh, i have used to mine my uh, device apk info so that it, it, it will give it, give us the um app package name so this is my so now we are going to get the package name so let's get the package name so i have connected my device with the uh, visor app so here uh, this app that we are going to automate so package name will be au.com.seek so that we need to add com.seek so we have added above line to the below so here we need to add app activity so that is also we can get it uh, through apk info app so let's find it there app activity so let's go to the device so here it's going to give us app activity details so uh, here it's there seek dot base dot ua dot main view dot main activity so we need to add this value here for the key value app activity so that the app will be located so these two values are very important app package name and app activity so that the app easily point it out so we have added app activity details now we need to use driver object that we have initialized and declared above line number 7 driver equal to new remote web driver then open parenthesis then new url so inside we need to give the url value for the server rpm server so 
so this is the value that I have in my Appium server 127.0.0.1 colon 4723 slash wd slash hub this is the server address so where our script will run so then we need to pass this object value here so we have passed then let's finish it with the colon then let's correct it import remote web driver from org let's open QA. so now it's corrected so uh, needs to be imported so let's include the second one so that we need to add a try catch let's surround with the try catch so here um, so malformed your exception that that is ended so next we need to get the locator value for the app so that we can make work on app to automate uh, so let's uh, drive at find element so here we need to get the locate value from the app by dot id then we need to get the id value for the locator so that we need to go to app with the help of appium server so we'll get the locator value from there then we need to add it here so that our script work on the element with values So here uh, before that we need to do few configuration so that this server will point out our app app package then we need to give the value there so it's very simple only paste it here then one more value we need to pass app also let's copy this key and let's paste this main activity value so we have added then we can start server so it started it's going to locate our app so we can see our app we can see our device in left hand side so top down you can see device is attached now so it's going to connect with our real device and find out the app by the value which we have provided so it started locating the app from our real device so it started working on let's wait for that so it's uh, locating so it will take a few fraction of seconds So it's going to locate now let's wait for that now it's located our device in left hand side our device screen will be displayed so it's launched app also in, in our real device so let's locate this username field email address field so we need to click on in right hand side we'll get the value for the ID for the user 
with the locator value id with the value so that is au.com dot seek dot colon id slash input hyphen email so this is the id value for the locator so here we need to send the value with send keys method we can include the input value what we need to pass it there so same value that we can give it here so i'm going to pass my email id here so double quote finish it so now it will drop the email address there at username field so let's add the value for password also so let's get the password field locator value further we need to go to appian server so i'm going to send the password value as test at the rate of one two three four so here we need to find out the password field value locator value so let's click on so the topmost you could see the blue color highlighted section click on tap on then place it in password field so the va locator value you could see in the right hand side below the selected element field so it's started working on so we'll get the locator value there yes yeah, we got it then id a.com dot seek ua input password we got it so let's include it here so now we could drop the password value also in the app to the real device let's finish it after that we need to click on submit button also let's copy above line and paste it there then we could alter it as per our requirement so now we need to find out the sign in button locator value so let's uh, tap on the top highlighted blue square so i have clicked on sign in button and we need to get the value for the submit button with the help of the locator id value so we got it so let's uh, click on it so for the dot click method let's include it so let's save it so now what we have done is we have added locator with the values to enter the username password and click on submit button so it has to open the app seek app in real device then it has to enter the username password then it has to be clicked on submit button so that we will get into dashboard so after click on submit button we need it and the script has to wait for few milliseconds for that let's add the wait statement the dot sleep so that we could see the incident so how it's happening otherwise it will quit so let's format our script now then Now we are going to run our script now so let's see how it's working so for that uh, let's right click select option as run as java application so let's open my device through visor so so that we can see the output so how it's running So it's going to launch app then going to perform the operation so let's wait for that so it will take a uh, little bit seconds let's wait for that so 
so it's going to launch now it will launch and uh, enter the username password then click on submit button let's enter the username password it has clicked on sign in button so it, we reached dashboard thank you for watching have a great day please subscribe my channel